Peace. This is a meat and potato sushi production starring myself, the Warrior Alchemist. And today's topic for the occult family is how to attend a funeral as an occultist. This is a subject that some people talk about, but I feel not nearly enough how you should approach a funeral. Because one thing that I've seen from my personal experience is that people sometimes can treat a funeral just as personal as a wedding. You know, when you have a wedding, some of your friends want to have their input and they almost want to take it over, whether it be with the groomsmen, who's not going to be a groomsman, or the bridesmaids or the maid of honor. This can lead to a lot of stress for the primary parties involved. Well, this is no different when it comes to a funeral. And the reason that I say this is that some people will take it upon themselves to reimagine the person that's made their transition and insert a certain narrative into an obituary. This is, in my personal opinion, not so much short-sighted, but incredibly disrespectful. So how you should approach it, approach it from the word occult. Occult means secret or that which is concealed or hidden. This is how you should approach it. And if a person was open to the occult may not have been a practicing one, but they were willing to listen or have a conversation to get a better understanding. You want to do a ritual for that person to cross over successfully, because when a person meets their demise, it has to set in with them that they have transitioned. And that doesn't happen overnight because remember, time is different on that side. So. How you should approach it is you should already have a ritual in mind. And one of the things that you can do, and people may say it's a rueful campaign and misinformation, but I will do it anyway, is that you can create a sigil by using their name, their first, last name, and you can imbue it with your energy, first of all, and then you can... Also, the viewing of the body, you can put the sigil near it on the skin or the arm, or etc. So it can get some of that energy. And remember, the energy, it hasn't all the way went away. You have to understand that this is why a lot of occultists, they want to do something with at least upwards to 72 hours of the body because there's still lingering energy going wrong around that's why it's very important to go to the viewing of the body so you can create that sigil you can go to viewing the body and you can get some of that charge that's still left because not it's not completely gone the other thing is let's say it's the actual funeral okay so how you would approach this is that if they ask would anyone like to speak and you know you have to keep your remarks anywhere from one to two minutes what you can do is you can speak, but in your head, what you're doing is you're going over a chant or a ritual of what spirits or spirits that you want to grant them. This is very important, especially if you're related to the individual. So if you're there, a brother, a sister, a cousin, you you both have bloodline ties. So it's very important that you do that, that you do the ritual in your head or you can wear certain regalia that people aren't going to understand you can wear certain necklaces i'm not saying you have to go like with the one i got on because i think that's a little bit obvious but you can go with a leques or you can go with certain a certain sigil everyone doesn't recognize the sigil of saturn they don't recognize the sigil of lilith they recognize lucifer okay that's a given but the other one or you can wear a pendant with Horus or Heru because Horus, the eye of Horus is a symbol of protection. So you can have Horus protect him until he runs into his brother, which we all know is Anubis, one of the gatekeepers. So you can do that. The other thing is, let's say during a repass, you can take the obituary, you can take some food that was prepared at the repass and on your altar, you can put it there and then you can take it to a crossroads. So this is the way that you should approach it. You should always approach it from trying to help the dead 
have a successful transition and not get stuck in the in-between realm. Because when you look at the <laughs> when you look at the obituaries, some of these obituaries be wild. I remember there was this individual I knew. We had a relationship. We were we were close in the brotherhood. And I remember when I had, uh, attended his funeral and he died at a very young age, 22 to be exact. And they got Reverend Porkchop. There was a family member. And I'm so sick of these people that got ministers in their family. Oh, could you come and speak or whatever? But I digress. And, he, and I noticed one thing in there. They said, oh, he had an interest in black history. An interest in black history. He wasn't Christian and he wasn't a Muslim either. He had an interest. You see how people could take something and just transmogrify it and just take it. That's like saying, oh, well, you know, mentor, he he was spiritual. And then, no, just tell the truth. Just tell the truth. He was an occultist and he was a sorcerer. It is what it is. But we so busy trying to impress your Aunt Cynthia, you you know, same Aunt Cynthia you ain't seen like in six, seven years. Or you're going to impress this uncle that's living high on the hall, but he don't have time for the peasants of the family. Stop trying to impress these trogs. So those are some things that you really can do. And especially if they were in the occult, you can have the emissaries of Hecate greet that spirit so there's a myriad of things that you could do but when you go to any funeral you just don't drop the occult tiss at the door no the the occult that comes in with you and whatever work you do you do it clandestinely this is how you do it so for those that have lost a loved one you still can do something for them because the veil is thin and the closer it gets to Halloween, you're going to receive more and more messages from people that know that you can serve as a conduit to help them on the other side. In case you didn't know that, you can. So with that, that is your meat and potatoes sorcery for the day. I am the Water Alchemist. Water, my friends. Peace.